Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Smriti Oja and in today's video we will discuss about paragraph structuring in research manuscripts. Let's first understand what actually is a paragraph. Well, it's a self-enclosed unit of any write-up or a group of sentences expressing one idea at a time. All the sentences are bound by an overriding unity. That means all the sentences in that paragraph express one common idea or opinion or topic at one time. A new idea will be expressed in another new paragraph. Now let's see what are the elements of a paragraph. It has three elements, topic sentence, supporting details and conclusion or concluding sentence. Topic sentence introduces the idea of the paragraph or the topic of the paragraph for the first time. It is always located in the first paragraph. It can be usually the first sentence in the first paragraph or it can be a second or a third sentence also but it is always in the first paragraph and it lets the readers know about the main topic of the paragraph. Then we have supporting details which makes the body of the paragraph. It has facts, opinions, statistics or any additional information about the main topic. And last of all, we have conclusion. It is actually a summary of all the points or the main points discussed in the above paragraphs. Let's check this and understand it better with an example. Let's consider this write-up. Here, the first sentence is the topic sentence because it actually talks about luxury goods sector and introduces the main topic of the paragraph to the readers. So, this is our first sentence and this is our topic sentence. Now, the further information about luxury goods sector is explained in another paragraph and that makes the body of the paragraph or the supporting details. Here, supporting details consist of solution suggested or to the main reasons behind the competition in luxury brand sector or it also connects information about the previous research related to the same topic that is luxury goods sector. And the last few sentences form the conclusion of the paragraph. They are also forming a base for the new paragraph or a new idea which will be discussed. Now what should be the ideal length of a paragraph? It should neither be too short or nor very long because it might distract the readers. The maximum length the paragraph can have is about 15 to 17 lines. But not all the paragraphs should be of this length. It is the maximum length of a paragraph. Other paragraphs can be shorter as much as 8 to 12 lines or 4 to 6 lines. So basically a research manuscript should have a blend of long and short paragraphs. A new paragraph will be created when you talk about slightly different from the topic which you have mentioned in the first paragraph. When you think that your topic is going to talk about a new idea, then you can change the paragraph. Or if you feel that you have written 8 to 12 lines or 4 to 6 lines, then it is time to change a new paragraph expressing a new opinion. For example, in your research manuscript, if you have expressed the approach of another author, regarding problem X and now you want to make a comparison with your own approach. So you can talk about your own approach in a new paragraph. Here the problem X, the topic is the same but since the focus is different, two paragraphs can be made highlighting the two different approaches, one by the other author and one your own approach. Let's further understand why long paragraphs are ineffective. Your research manuscript should not have 15 to 20 sentences in one time in one paragraph. We should rather go for short paragraphs. Let's understand why short paragraphs are more effective. Because long, while writing long paragraphs, it is only comfortable for the writer, for the author. Because it helps to save time and you are going in one flow. So it is only beneficial for you. But for the reader, it leaves the reader confused even distracted and disinterested. Also, the visual representation of long blocks of text or long paragraphs having 15 to 16 sentences is very unappealing to the reader and it is also tiring for the eyes to see. They also distract the readability of the whole paragraph or the research manuscript. Whereas in short paragraphs, 
you can better express the content in a more logical sequence which brings more clarity to the readers. Also, one important benefit of having a short paragraph is because sometimes your research efforts or writing efforts are shared by a co-author. When you are writing sh short paragraphs, it helps the co-authors to quickly identify where they need to add more information or what information is lacking and they can quickly identify the gaps. But it is not possible or it is very difficult to spot the need for extra information in a very long paragraph. Lastly, when you are writing short paragraphs, you tend to repeat the keywords related to your content or the main topic of the research to keep interconnectedness between the content or the paragraphs or to bring cohesion in two to three paragraphs. When you are repeating the keywords, it makes it easier for the readers to keep them focused on your central idea of the research. The next question is how to break long paragraphs into shorter ones. While we are writing our research manuscripts, we tend to uh, write in a flow and that creates long paragraphs. So let's understand how we can make our paragraphs shorter and effective ones. Let's take the example of aims and objective section. If your research manuscript has more than one aim, then every aim should be discussed in a new paragraph. In the literature review column, we normally sort out and highlight the previous research according to the authors, according to the variable wise study or year wise study. In any case, a new paragraph should be started to highlight the work of a new author or a different variable if it is discussed or a different year when it is taken. In the method section, if you are employing or deploying a different method for your experimentation and it requires to be explained in a series of steps or procedure, in that case, different elements or different components of the method or these different steps in one procedure should be expressed in different short paragraphs. This makes it easier for the readers to understand the logical sequence of the procedure or the steps discussed. In the discussion section, which is also called the research section, every time you are highlighting a different key finding, it should be expressed in a new paragraph. The conclusion section contains a specific gap. It normally highlights the gaps and limitations. So every gap should be or every contribution should be expressed in a different paragraph to focus on the different points discussed. The background of the research is also the introduction part of the research thesis. While you are writing the background and you are creating a phase or in the logical buildup of a research topic, while you move uh, from one phase to a different phase of evolution of your topic, in that case, a different phase should be highlighted in a different and new paragraph. This will help us to break our long paragraphs into short ones. Now let's understand each of this section with the help of examples. Let's take example one that is aims and objectives. We'll understand how to break long paragraphs into short ones in aims and objectives section through an example. Consider this paragraph for aims and objectives. Now rather than writing all the aims in one paragraph, the new paragraphs can be made according to the number of aims discussed in the section. So clearly the first aim can be spotted in the first sentence so we can number it now rather than writing secondly in words we can convert it into number and we can start this second second aim in second paragraph like this now there is a third aim that can be spotted here so this can become our third point like this Now consider this improved version of aims and objectives. It gives the readers clarity about the aims and it lets the readers quickly identify the three different aims inherent in the research. Further, let's understand how we can convert long paragraphs into short paragraphs in the re review of literature section in our research manuscript. We'll show this with an example. This is the extract of review of literature based on the studies by various authors. So in this case, different paragraphs can be made according to the author wise study. 
so clearly the first author is this and it can be our first paragraph the second author can be spotted here so here we can break the paragraph and start with a new paragraph with the new author study the third author can be spotted here so this can become our third paragraph now consider this improved version this looks more systematic and quickly the readers can identify the studies and approaches used by three different authors and so on now let's see how to break long paragraphs into short paragraphs in the research methodology section we'll understand this with the help of an example consider this paragraph in research method section this is a very long paragraph and the readers might find it difficult to absorb the information and various steps involved in applying a particular method discussed here so we can break it down into shorter paragraphs depending on the number of steps involved for example here the baseband model has been talked for the first time so we can start a new paragraph from here the next paragraph can be started somewhere from here since it talks about a new thing called symbols for the first time so now consider this improved version here uh, it is the information is more precisely discussed and the various steps shown separately helps the readers to grasp the information in a logical sequence and identify the number of steps involved in a quick manner further let's proceed with the result and discussion column how we can break long paragraphs into short and effective ones in this section through an example consider this example in the discussion section or result section it is a very long paragraph because all the key findings have been discussed in this one paragraph we can have shorter paragraphs depending on the number of results discussed so the first result discussed uh, can be spotted in the first line the second can be spotted here because it talks about another result that evaluation of the performance and comparison so here it can be taken as a second paragraph going further the word the use of the word moreover suggests that it talks about a further result so here we can break the paragraph and convert it into a shorter one now the features of the proposed estimator can be can become our next paragraph since it is a new topic so now consider this improved version this looks more systematic and it gives the readers a quick glance at the various key results or discussion points highlighted in this section and it makes the whole document more readable now we'll understand how we can have short and effective paragraphs and how we can break long paragraphs into shorter ones in the conclusion section we'll understand with the help of an example this is the extract of conclusion section in a research manuscript which talks about research gaps in the content so instead of having this long paragraph we can try to find where we can break this long paragraph into a shorter one depending on the number of research gaps discussed so the first couple of sentences denote the first research gap the words another important issue clearly denote that there is a second research gap so here we can begin our next paragraph likewise for every research gap discussed we can try to make a new paragraph so this is the improved version which emphasizes each research gap in a more systematic way and it makes the whole content readable for the researchers or other authors or publication houses lastly let's understand how we can have shorter paragraphs instead of long paragraphs in the background of the research section which is also sometimes called the introduction section so consider this long paragraph in the introduction section which is the background of the research on the topic work life balancing nursing industry so instead of having this long paragraph and explaining everything in one paragraph it can be broken down into a number of short paragraphs so the first few lines of this paragraph 
have a logical build up of the topic work life balance and why it is necessary but as we move further from this sentence it traces the evolution of the topic from few years back so this can become our next, next paragraph going further these few sentences talk about the relevance of work life balance in the current context so this can become our third paragraph now consider this improved version with shorter number of paragraphs this looks more systematic and it gives a clear idea to the readers or the other researchers about the logical build up or the logical phases of evolution of the topic in hand more clearly i hope you find today's content valuable for any information or assistance on proofreading services please contact me dr smriti hauja at the email id mentioned here for further updates on research content and insightful content please like share and subscribe to the youtube channel learning with chandan please share your valuable feedback and post your comments on our channel learning with chandan thank you